Hello class, and welcome to a guide through the first canto of the Poem of the Cid. Uh, hopefully, this guide will make what could be a difficult story a little bit easier to understand. I'm going to try to take you through the various towns that the Cid traveled through, and um, hopefully that'll g help give some st shape and structure to the story. So we start off in medieval Spain, um, which you can see is quite close to Africa. Um, so Spain is ruled at this time the southern half of it by the Moors, uh, you know, Muslim invaders from North Africa, with a few Christian kingdoms in the north. Uh, the largest of these kingdoms is Castile and Leon, which is now a modern province, or a province in modern Spain. So, in this, uh, it's the most powerful of the kingdoms, and this is where uh, the Cid works for the King Alfonso. So the Cid's holding is in the town of Vivar, and this is where the story begins, that the Cid has some inkling that, hey, something's not quite right here. Um, and he's, you know, getting some reports of there being bad news, so he heads out on the road south, and again, forgive me here while I kind of uh, futz with the controls, uh, but what I'm trying to do is to lower the camera so you can get a sense of, you know, kind of what the countryside looks like. And I'll do this, you know, throughout um, to when geography plays an important role in the story. But you know, Spain, a lot of arid farm, you know, arid country, small farms, small towns that are separated by a great deal of distance. You know, in some ways, quite similar to what it was during the, the medieval period. So just trying to find the right level of zoom to uh, to use here. Apologies for being a little twitchy on the controls. Okay. So the Cid travels down to Burgos. And that's where he learns the news that he has, in fact, been exiled by his king, Alfonso. Um, again, what the reasons for this are somewhat are nev not really given in the story. Uh, we'll touch on that later. So the Cid, hearing that he's exiled, uh, s swindles some Jews out, out of some money, gathers some supporters, gets all the stuff he can carry, and goes to the monastery of San Pedro de, de Cardenia. Uh, there he meets with his wife, who was there praying, and tells her that basically you're going to have to stay here. Because you, know, you can't have a woman living on her own. That's, that's crazy talk. So his wife and his daughter stay in the monastery, and the author describes the separation between the two as like the parting of the flesh from the nail. Um, which... You know, the fact that he would even think to give that example might tell you how violent the world um, that the the author and his characters uh, inhabited was. So, uh, from there, the Cid sets out. Now, again, this is a best guess at, you know, th this is, I have no evidence that this is the exact route that he traveled. I'm, I'm cutting across uh, geographical features here. Um, so, you know, but he went through the roads in this and there are times when um, again I am more sure where he went and then I'll try to focus on the uh, on the terrain a little bit more but you can see how hilly and mountainous uh, this region of Spain is so you know the lay of the land you know how to get through uh, plays a big part in the, in the lives of these people and uh, plays a big part in how the story unfolds. So, traveling, traveling, traveling. Again, I think I will again, bear with me as I find the best way to tune the controls here. And that brings us to our next stop. So, the next stop on the Sid's itinerary is this town here, Acubia. Travels through San Esteban de Gormaz. Now, it mentions in the text that he goes by on the left, or that the town's on the left. It looks like I mean, he was actually probably traveling down this river that you can see here. Um, sorry, when I was drawing, I didn't notice that it was there. Probably, so he travels through this valley, and then cr um, crosses the river, aha, now this makes more sense, uh, to Navapalos. And this is the Duero River, one of Spain's fairly few. Uh, notable rivers. And at this point, he's pretty much in Moorish territory. Uh, the next town that's mentioned, Atienza, uh, is held by the, uh, the Moors. So 
he goes there, and at this town, um, he splits off. So the Cid himself goes up to this place, Castahan. Specifically, the town Castanon de Henares. Uh, it's just referred to as Castahan in the in the book. And again, the book describes the uh, the battle here in some in some detail. So, and I'll let you read that. And again, any questions you have about the course of that, it'll you can handle that in the discussion forums. But the rest of his part, coming back here to, to Atienza, again, this is looking south. Remember, so he sends um, from Atienza, Alvar Fan. Uh, Fanez, he sends him basically on a raid down towards Guadalajara, which is an, another um, Moorish held and Muslim held city. So he goes by the town of Hida here. And what makes Guadalajara interesting is that, once again, here we have a river. So they raid Guadalajara, they sack the city and, and steal some, some loot, and then they go a little bit further down to Alcala and raid that town as well. So again, so with a small number of uh, followers, you can tell again, this is a pretty sizable distance that he's radi radiating across. And he's really, you know, kind of tearing up the countryside as he goes. Not terribly interested in holding on to these towns. In fact, Castahan, after he uh, loots it, he leaves it to, uh, to the inhabitants. And the inhabitants are very happy that, one, he didn't loot the town so badly that the inhabitants had nothing left. Um, and two, that he didn't massacre them all, which you know, was a serious concern that was going to happen. So again, so he does pretty well for himself in Castan. He sends some gifts back to Alfonso to try to buy his buy his way back into the court. Um, but he feels that this that Castan is a little bit too close to Alfonso's territory. Um, and get Burgos back here. So you know, he wants to get a little bit further away, kind of the next valley over. So he decides that he's going to follow up this river, make a turn at the town of Satina, and go and attack this city down here, Alcocer. Once again, travels down the near uh, the river valley. So you know, taking roads, following the river. turned and marched on this town here. So then, the Cid su succeeds in, in capturing this town, and this he holds on to for a little while. And part of that is that he's now made the surrounding more cities very nervous. Uh, Catayud and Terer are the two that the book mentions. So the local Moor cities call out to Valencia, the nearest major Moor stronghold. There's a Moorish king there. So from so this guy sends out an army, and they go out to engage engage the Cid. So I've got their path traced out in green here. Mentions that they go through Segorbe, and again, it's not the most. They don't take a straight line. They have to follow the natural formation. So we've got a bit of a river valley here that they that they go through. So Segorbe, Telfa, meet up uh, with more Moorish forces in Catayud, and then they go and they lay siege to the Cid in Alcacer. And the Cid tries holding out. Eventually, he starts to run out of water. 
um, which is what a siege is supposed to do. You starve your enemy out of resources, and you force them to come to come out and fight you or just to surrender. So the Cid goes to uh, to attack. He tries to keep his, his army in formation, and one of his knights, um, just kind of in battle fever, decides that he's going to make a charge all by himself. And does this, uh, which, again, medieval knights have the nasty tendency to do, d defy orders and attack because they feel like it. In this case, it works, and it leads to the Cid breaking the Moorish army. So now he's established himself you know, as a ruler here in Alcacer. And has uh, driven off um, a Moorish host. Um, again, pay attention to the list of stuff that he gets from this battle, and that'll help tell you about you know, what is valued by these uh, by these knights the the Cid has won his battle at, at El Cosair, and then from here he starts making his next move so he goes back up again a very kind of clumsily overlaid uh, his route with that the more out of Al uh, Alcacer it's the same route that the Moors took in so he marches from there goes past Kalatayud, that's a Moor city that he exacts tribute from, and then goes down to that mountain range there, and goes to this place, El Pollo de, uh, del Cid. A Pollo is a ridge, and it looks like in this case they're using it to mean hill. And Again, there's a passage in the book that so long as there are Christians and Moors, this place will continue to be called El Pollo del Cid. It is still called that today. So from this hill, he, he builds a camp here, and he goes and raids the surrounding countryside. And is such a problem, you know, cause, is such a threat to the surrounding countryside, that Sarag uh, Saragossa... Zaragoza, again, how, however one chooses to translate the Spanish, but, you know, the city over here, all, in, in pretty far away, uh, becomes a, tr a tributary of the Cid. So they send him money and goods so that he leaves them alone. So, you know, he's enough of a threat, he's enough of a known presence that people, you know, other kingdoms in the area are afraid of him. So, from his big freaking hill, he turns again, and marches on the next two towns. Now, to do this, he goes through what the book calls the, the Pass of Olocao. I couldn't quite figure out where this was, um, but I think, I know that he went to Huesa and Maltabon, are the next two towns that he attacks. And again, if you zoom in, you can once again see that this is a mountainous area. But if you look, there is a path through the mountains here. And particularly, you know, right here, this area. So I don't know, again, if you went through here, through there. Um, but this is probably that pass that he went through. So again, two more towns that he sacks, more riches are gathered. And, again, he's now coming... Let me zoom out. And he's pretty close to the coast at this point. And he's starting to draw the attention of some of the other coastal kingdoms. Now, again, he's already beaten an army from Valencia. So they're, you know, effectively out of the fight. They have no desire to mess with the Cid. Um, but Barcelona, however, ruled by a Count Ramon, uh, he now wants to ride forth and stop the Cid's depredations. Um, and where I've placed the pin, you can see that's the remnants of looks to be a 17th, 18th century fort. Um, you know, certainly where it's positioned on the town. I'm sure that there might have been a castle here originally. So this might have been, you know, certainly Count Ramon would have ruled from a high hill overlooking Barcelona. So, now, Barcelona is an interesting example. You know, again, if we zoom out here, you can see that Barcelona is well inside Spain. Um, historically, or at least at the, at the time of the story, Barcelona is, actually, is within the Frankish kingdom, so it's inside of, you know, 
what is effectively France. And Count Ramon rules a mixed kingdom of Christians and Muslims. So he summons, you know, he gathers soldiers of both faiths uh, to be in his army. And he marches down, and another place where he couldn't quite figure out the location, uh, the Wood of Tevar. It's mentioned as a piney wood, uh, which, looking around, you know, this, this is kind of the nearest f you know, wooded area that he could find from the Sith's position in Multiban. So, you know, they probably crashed, clashed somewhere in this region. Uh, the Sith is ambushed once again, uh, just like at, at, at the siege of uh, Alcacer. Uh, he starts off you know, at a disadvantage, fights his way out, and ends up cat, uh, cap capturing the Duke Ramon. And you know, the, the two negotiate a little bit. Um, Ramon is pleasantly surprised to find that the Sith is not going to kill him. And then he's sent on his way. So, yeah, not a territory that the Sith conquered, at least not yet, or not for now. Um, but it's someone that the Sith is kind of humbled and, you know, reduced to a non-threat. So, that's where the first canto ends. So you've seen the Sith go from you know, uh, an exile with just a, a you know, couple dozen fo followers and the clothes on his back to someone that you can at least exercises influence over, if not actually controls, a pretty sizable chunk of Spain. So... You know, I think that this demonstrates how you know f how fluid politics and power and violence were during this period, and uh, you know, hopefully you found that interesting. And we'll we'll continue on the adventures of the Cid as we head into the s the second and third contos of this book. So uh, see you then.